How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the best FPS possible on the Back for Blood beta in under 8 minutes. Whether you're on old dated hardware all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware available, this video is going to be helping you guys achieve the best FPS possible, also helping reduce input latency and any micro stuttering issues you may be experiencing. Back for Blood seems to be a relatively well optimised game from the base but there is a ton of FPS gains in which we can achieve very quickly and easily and we're going to be going over those in this video. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do leave a like and if you enjoy this sort of content and wish to stay up to date with the channel, press the subscription button and the bell notification where you'll then be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. We'll be going over all of the in-game settings to optimise them for your machine, ensuring that you have the best looking game possible whilst having a fantastic frame rate and reduced input latency. Before we boot into the game to go over all of our in-game settings, we're quickly going to be setting up a few vital settings with inside of Windows to ensure that we're getting the best FPS possible in Back for Blood. Starting off, navigate inside of Steam where you'll be able to find the Back for Blood beta, right click, navigate down to properties. Once inside of it we're going to be going over to the local files tab then selecting browse. You'll then be brought into the game's installation directory, we're going to be finding the Back for Blood application, right clicking, navigating down to properties, going over to the compatibility tab, ensuring that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, then navigate down to change high DPI settings, override the high DPI scaling behavior, select ok, apply and ok. That's going to disable some built in Windows 10 full screen optimizations which actually reduce FPS. We're going to be applying the optimization once again but this time going inside of the GOBI folder, going to binaries, win64 and applying the application fix to back for blood with inside of it once again. Navigating down to properties, compatibility, disable full screen, change IDPI, override, ok, apply and ok. Next up are going to be our customised launch options for the game, you can also find these in the description down below under the launch options section. Once you find them, navigate all the way from the right hand side all the way to the left to make sure all of the launch options have been selected, right click then select copy. Navigate down into steam, right click on back for blood, right click, go to properties, navigate down to launch options, right click, select paste. Once the launch options have then been pasted we can then go ahead and exit out. For a few last windows optimizations which are incredibly important to get the best FPS possible and further reduce input latency, navigate to the bottom left hand side, select the windows button, type in GPU space settings, then select enter. If you do have the option available to you for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, make sure that this is turned to the on position. We can then navigate down to graphics performance preference, then select browse. With inside of here go over to this PC, select this PC, navigate to the top right hand side to search this PC and we're going to be searching for back for blood then pressing enter. Hover over the applications and we're looking for the application located in the GOBI folder binaries win64 which is this application, select this, select add, navigate down to options, select high performance, save and exit out. Last but not least for the windows optimizations we can navigate to the bottom left hand side, select the windows key once again, type in power space plan then press enter. With inside of here navigate to the navigation bar at the top, select power options and if you do have the high performance power plan available with inside of here it is recommended to come off of balanced and select the high performance power plan to ensure that you are getting the best FPS possible. With all of the windows optimizations done and out of the way we can then go ahead and finally boot into the game to go through all of our in-game settings and fine tune them for the best performance possible. Go ahead and select sign in and the game should boot just like so. We can then go ahead and start optimizing the game settings to achieve the level of desired performance in which we're looking for. As you can see for me I'm getting around about 70 frames per second currently. So we're going to go ahead and select escape, navigate down to options, going up to the graphics tab, starting off make sure that windowed mode has been selected to full screen as this will give you the best FPS and lowest level of input latency. And make sure that the screen resolution has been set to your monitor's native resolution. For me that's 1920 by 1080. Anti-aliasing, this is where we can actually enable Nvidia DLSS by going over to the fourth option if you are running on an Nvidia DLSS compatible graphics card. For DLSS I wouldn't actually recommend using this setting unless you are looking to max out the game's graphics or play on extremely high demanding graphics at 4K. If you're playing at 1440p or below, you'll actually find that you'll have better FPS not using DLSS. For the best FPS possible, I would go with anti-aliasing switched to off, but if the game is too sharp for you in that case, go ahead and set this to FXAA. Motion blur should be turned off for everyone. Chromatic aberration can actually stay on as this has a minimal impact towards FPS. Adaptive FX quality. This seems to introduce some micro stutter for me on my machines, so I'm going to recommend turning this off. Field of view can be set to personal preference. This will have a minor impact on your FPS but for the most part set this to how you like it. V-Sync should be turned to the off position, limit FPS is going to currently be set to off as we want to get the best FPS possible and we can limit the FPS later on if we wish to do so. Quality we're going to be setting this to custom, post processing is recommended to have switched to low for the best FPS possible as this is one of the options which tanks the FPS the hardest. So for the best FPS possible go with low, if you must have this on go with medium at the highest. Texture quality can be set to match the graphics card in which you have installed to your machine. If you have a low end graphics card go with low, medium end graphics card go with medium and I've relatively new or higher end graphics card go 
low with high. Texture quality seems to have a very minimal impact on FPS. Effects quality should be set down to low as this is another option which will tank your frames per second and won't change much in terms of visual quality. Shadow quality again is going to be one of the options which is going to tank your FPS so we're going to be going ahead with low but if you do want to slightly increase visual fidelity set this to medium. But my recommendation even if you're running on an RTX 3080 or higher is to go with low. Foliage quality can be set to medium at the highest. You can then set brightness, saturation, contrast and HDR depending on your personal preferences. This then brings us down to graphics API. I've checked this game out on four different machines, three of those are desktops and one of those is a laptop which you're currently watching this video recorded on. DirectX 12 outperforms DirectX 11 in every single one of those machines and seems to provide an FPS increase of about 30 to 40 percent. So we're going to be going to graphics API and switching this over to DX12. Sharpening. Turning this to the on position will provide you with fidelity FX sharpening which is incredibly good but you shouldn't use this unless Unless you are looking for further FPS by lowering your render resolution scale. If you are just going to play at your monitor's native resolution and you want to play with a 100% render scale, I would recommend keeping sharpening off. But if you are looking for a further FPS boost at the end of this video, if you're not quite happy with your results, I would set the render scale starting off at about 90% and make sure when you do this to turn sharpening fidelity FX on. For now I'm going to be turning this off, setting my render resolution up to 100, selecting apply to these settings and you will have to restart the game once those settings have been applied. Once again, if I go ahead and show you the FPS in game now, I'm getting 105 frames per second, running on DirectX 11, we're going to reboot the game which will then boot the game in DirectX 12 because we made that change, and we'll see how much of an FPS increase we've got. So as you can see the game has now rebooted, we're running in DirectX 12 mode and we're getting around about 126 to 130 frames per second, so just switching from DirectX 11 to 12 after all of the optimizations, we were still able to achieve an extra 30 frames per second in that case. Now at this point you are looking to cap your in-game FPS for that extra added bit of smoothness, as you can see my frame time graph is still a little bit inconsistent there on the left hand side. If you are looking to cap your in-game FPS you can do this with inside of the game menus and also using a program called RTSS or Reva Tuner Statistics Server. Scroll down to the limit FPS option, you can either limit this to your display's refresh rate, or you can set a custom limit, which I'd prefer to do. For me, this laptop's display is a 120Hz panel, so I'm going to be capping my in-game FPS to that, and as you can see, my FPS has now successfully been capped at 121, and we're not moving whatsoever. Like most games, this game's in-game FPS cap is not particularly great, and we can use a program such as RTSS, which I'm going to use here to cap my frame rate further. Link to this program can be found in the description down below. Once it's been downloaded and installed, go over to the frame rate limit, input your FPS limit. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to leave a like as it does help me out tremendously, and for further gains and performance optimizations, check out the videos on screen now.